12 core value number 8 is I love training and equipping and training and equipping is our happy hour tend to your spiritual growth and take advantage of training equipping and mentorings whether it be from our network mentorings G12 mentorings and even life class and school of leaders equipping chat we have been given the greatest opportunities to be trained and equipped for the furtherance of God's kingdom. So be compelled to level up in your faith. Elevate in your life with Christ. Be part of the training process. And release your leadership potential.
Join the network mentoring with our very own Pastor Godofredo Amba. This will happen monthly from 6 p.m. along with all our network churches. The presence of God will be so strong that my brothers and my sisters, when we go there, we are expected to work well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another way we can be further mentored and trained is through the G12 Mentorings with Bishop Oriel Baliano of G12 Philippines. To do this, to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill all the principle of authority, we have to align. Uh, you will prepare the word. You have to obey the authority. And of course, we are also privileged and blessed to have our monthly G12 UK leaders meeting and mentoring with Pastor Cesar Castellanos of MCI Bogota, Colombia. I pray that God will give you an anointing for multiplication where you could experience supernatural reproduction in all that the Lord has entrusted you. To stay updated with all these new mentorings, head on over to our Instagram and Facebook page and follow us for all the announcements and further details. Part of our happy hour is also the life class and School of Leaders equipping track where we witness precious souls level up in the ladder of success. As we have transitioned to the digital platform, let us remain unstoppable for Jesus. So as we go through the process of winning, consolidating, discipling and sending, we'd love for you to join the journey too. Our life class and school of leaders are every weekend where you can learn the Word of God, virtually interact with fellow students through activities, be equipped in discipleship and be developed into a leader of leaders. to let you know that a new life class batch will be coming soon so if you're interested contact your cell leader or the person that invited you we, we believe that the, the best, best is yet to come it is very important that we should be equipped in everything that we do especially in evangelizing to other people he commanded us and gave us authority to make disciples this is our mission now. We do this out of love. That we in the leadership, in the life class, in the equipping process, that all of us, we will let our Lord Jesus Christ to reign in our lives. Because there is a work to do. There is a job to specifically do. But my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is telling us, if you do this, when you go, preach your lives, your gospel lives, win them, baptizing them, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey the promise of God. I will be with you until the end of the ages.
Hello and blessed evening to every one of us in Pagasa Center. Welcome to our Tuesday Evangelistic Night. Tonight we will be with Brother Ben Butawan who will be preaching evangelistically regarding the topic of Nothing is Impossible with God according to Luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 38. And so today, tonight, I believe that as we will listen and focus to the message of God, I pray to God that every one of us will gain from this message. And to all of you who are our guests, our visitors, welcome to this Tuesday Evangelistic Night. It is the desire of the church, our church, Pagasa Center, to reach out to as many people regarding the Word of God. And so, we focus on really preaching the message that God wants us to preach so that people will be attracted to Him. And hopefully tonight, aside from us who, are, who have already been attracted to Jesus, may others will also be attracted because through His Word, which is alive and powerful that can change our lives. May I be, may we be able to, to get what God intends us to get tonight. And so, again, welcome and again, focus. Let us now pray. Oh God, our Father, we honor you, we worship you, we adore you. And we continue to declare that you alone is God and you are almighty sovereign. That you created all things and you sustain all things and you own all things. We continue to humble ourselves and telling you, O oh God, that we are dependent on you. We cannot do anything if we are disconnected with you. And so we ask that you forgive us of anything that displeased you today forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that tonight lord as we will listen to your word that will be preached may we receive your word powerfully that can change our lives and strengthen us in our journey as your children as your servants in pagasa center and so god thank you we bless your holy name, O God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us worship the Lord. Let's join the music team. Thank you, Jesus.
God, with confidence, oh God, that you are our way maker, our promise keeper, oh God. Yes, oh God. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see that you're working even when i don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see that you're working even when i don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working Good evening everyone. I hope you're all well seated and ready to hear the word of God today uh, for today's evangelism night. Uh, my name is Brother Ben Botawan. For those that who do not know me, I am one of the primary of Pastor Doc in Pagasa Centre, London. And I'm here gifted and privileged with the task of sharing today's evangelism night. So without further ado, what I would like to ask everyone to do is I would like to ask you guys to pray with me before we dive into today's topic for Evangelism Night. So uh, let's just bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today. We honor you, we worship you, and we adore you for who you are in our lives. God, we ask right now, if there's anything wrong in our hearts, forgive us right now. We ask for forgiveness. Allow us our, our minds and our hearts to be cleansed and ready to hear your word today, O oh God. Lord, that you will continue to be with us and that you will allow um, your precious blood, O oh God, to make us new and as white as snow as pure and as white as snow so lord we just thank you for the opportunity to come to gather today even online on facebook to speak and to hear about your message lord and i pray that as your vessel lord let your word be spoken through me that what we will discuss today in today's evangelism night lord let it be of your word of your gospel and of your truth and I pray for everyone tuning in today, oh God, Lord, that they will have no distractions around them and that they will be able to listen clearly and to hear, Lord, what you have in store for them so that their hearts will be like the good soil, oh Lord, and that they will be able to receive your word and that it will multiply in their lives. So, Lord, we just pray and thank you for today. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus, I pray. And all of God's people will say amen and amen. Okay, so for those, just to remind everyone that, you know, while we are here during the evangelism night i would like to ask you guys to make sure that there are no distractions around you make sure that you are able to listen clearly that your internet connection is fine so that you are able to hear what god has in store for you amen so like i said my name is brother ben Botawan. i am one of the primaries of pastor doc from pagasa center uk and i am just so excited to be here to share God's word today. And I believe that even all the way out here in the Philippines uh, with uh, Pastor Gosh and his team to experience the campus revolution and to, you know, be ready to be trained for the next generation. I believe that God still has a message for us today. So 
let's begin. So today's topic that we are going to discuss or today's title is nothing is impossible with God. So if you are watching and you are able to comment or even just say to the person beside you, say that in type, nothing is impossible with God. So our topic starts in the Bible verse of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. So I will read this. So please follow along with me. I am reading from the NKJV version. So Luke chapter 1, verse 26 says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 34, Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So in this verse, we are discuss, discussing about vir the Virgin Mary being, uh, being appeared by the angel of the Lord, Gabriel. So right now, what I want to do is discuss two interviews with the, with the angel. Okay, so if you read, if you followed along with me, it also said that her um, that her cousin, her family member Elizabeth, was also conceived, also bore a son, or was uh, pregnant. Okay, so what I want to do is discuss two interviews. So Mary was the second interview that the angel Gabriel had with, whereas um, Zach Zacharias which was Elizabeth's husband at the time, or was the first interview that he had with the, with the angel, okay? So there was one with Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, Mary's cousin, and then there was one with Mary and Joseph, okay? So both Elizabeth and her husband were advanced in years and childless. And Zacharias was doing his own thing at the, temp at the temple when the angel Gabriel appeared before him and just standing there at the right side of the altar in his workplace okay that is how it happened okay this is this is often the way that supernatural happens okay can everyone just say supernatural or comment down below supernatural okay when the supernatural happens one moment you are doing something that you've done hundreds of times before and the next moment then you are experiencing a supernatural moment it is this it is often the spectacular and the expectation of the spectacular that is a fundamental barrier to us experiencing and seeing the natural the supernatural okay so for both to then see the angel of the lord and appear to them it was taught that if you were to see god's face they would die okay the presence of the lord if they were to see god face to face they would die so when mary thought this and Zach zachariah thought this even all the way from the old testament in the story of Samson, when his life was conceived, his father Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. A lot of the times when we experience, or when in the Old Testament, especially in the temple where the priests work, whenever they went to talk to God, they would enter the presence of God. They would have to wear a rope, a rope around them and bells on the ankles of their feet. Because if they were to experience God's presence and there was sin in their life, or they were to see his face, then he would automatically die. Just like that. 
And so if they don't hear the bells ringing anymore, when the priest is in the presence of God, then they would pull him up because they would then know that at that moment that the priest has died. Okay. So in both situations, both with Mary and Elizabeth, they were afraid, but the angel said to them, fear not. Okay. So when we experience the supernatural, why does fear grip our hearts? You know, as humans, when we experience the supernatural, it is actually um, a common thing that we experience. Like when we see something that we do not understand as humans, the first thing that will come into our mind or will come into our ability to think is the fear. Okay. This is why when we experience the supernatural, especially as humans, when we are confronted by the holy presence of God, we can then immediately feel our own moral weakness. So this is like, for example, okay, um, growing up, I was born and I was raised in Pegasa since from the very beginning. So I used to be, I am actually a product of the Sunday school, uh, the, the, the kids ministry. And, you know, every time that I was called upon by my teachers at the time, which were Pastor Gosh and at Karen, every time I was called by them, I know that I was already in trouble. They would always say, Ben, come here, I need to talk to you. Or come into my office, is what they would say. So every time I step in, um, I would always be like, oh no, what have I done? Am I in trouble? I'm scared. Like, did I not? I didn't do the homework. I didn't do the assignment that was completed. Or during the lesson, even though I was one of the most active students, as answering questions, you know, being proactive and listening, I would also mock around a lot. I would also be distracted a lot. And of course, I believe that, you know, by God's grace, I am no longer a troublemaker, but a disciple maker. And I believe that it is because of what I've gone through in Sunday school, what God has put me through, that I can now uh, say this with my heart's content that, you know, I am no longer a troublemaker, but a disciple maker. Okay. So when we then see the supernatural, okay, when we feel the presence of God, do we then also have that kind of experience? We think, what have I done? Am I in trouble? You know, when I get in trouble by my parents, or even when I would get trouble in Sunday school, um, I would have a quick flashback. Does anyone ever experience a quick flashback of their lives when they are caught or they are, they are being summoned or they experience someone calling out to them? Like, Ben, come here. Then I'm like, oh my days, what did I do? And then I have a quick flashback. I, I try to think of everything that has happened in the last two weeks of whatever happened and to see whether or not I am at fault or not, okay? Even recently, you know, at Karen called me at my big age and I still, because of my human nature, I still thought that I was in trouble. I was thinking I had a quick flashback, but it was actually not because I was in trouble. So I just want to thank God, you know, a shout, a shout out talaga um, speaking my Taglish I'm learning a lot especially here in the Philippines okay um, so in the Bible especially in our passage for today in Luke chapter 1 in verse 30 it says that the angel said to Mary do not be afraid Mary for you have found favor with God so as Christians when we experience the supernatural we ought not to fear because the supernatural is how God is dealing with us. When God deals with us in the supernatural, it is because God is dealing with us in grace and not in anger. But another reason why humans would get scared is because we fear what we do not understand or control. So how many of you guys always want to be in control or want to be in to, to understand the whole situation or to be in control of it? So in both scenarios of Mary's and Zechariah's reaction to the Gabriel angel, Mary chose to have faith concerning what was beyond her understanding, whereas Zechariah chose to disbelieve. Okay. Now, when you hear about the concept of God, the, about the divine or the claim of Jesus Christ being the son of God, you are faced with his gospel. The good news that Jesus died on the cross as a substitute for all, for sinners. He shed his blood to wash away the stains of our immorality and our transgressions against God. So when you are confronted with the claims of the supernatural and God's supernatural intervention, what is your reaction? 
Maybe some of you who are watching this right now will say that if God sends me, you know, living hard proof right now, like an angel, if, if I was in Mary's situation and I see an angel, I would believe. But imagine Zach Zacharias was a whole religious cleric. He had an interview with an angel, but he didn't believe. A, a whole angel came up to Zacharias and said, you are about to be, you and your wife are about to bore a son and, you will, and his name will be John the Baptist. So imagine in his situation, it is his, almost his job to, to be close with God as part of a religion, okay? And there are also many other, several stories in the Bible where God's promise of a newborn came upon couples. The most infamous one I know is one of Abraham and Sarah even in their late 90s. Mary's situation was that there would be no man. So with Mary, when the angel appeared to her and said that you will bear a son, you will bore a son and his name will be Jesus, okay? It was a foreign concept to her because she is a virgin. In, in fact, she was even betrothed to Joseph, which means at the time that they are like fiance like uh, Brother Ken and Carmelo, okay? So, hypothetically, if I was to put myself in Joseph's shoes, and if I had a fiancé or a girlfriend, and one day she came to me and said, I'm pregnant, I will go crazy because, you know, as a fiancé, we would not have been intimate yet, okay? So for then, I will ask, oh, who... Or how did this happen? And then for her to then say the Holy Spirit, at this day and age, or even at that time, you know how much respect I have for Joseph. Because it was it is so hard to believe that, you know, your virgin uh, fiancé, wife-to-be is now pregnant and she's saying that it's the Holy Spirit, Okay. So imagine even what Mary was going through, the, the, the woman, a young woman, a teenager, in fact. Yeah, this kind of thing is incomprehensible. It's just something that you cannot understand. But the simple answer to how this is possible is God. It is all God. From the beginning of the Bible, it's, it doesn't show you or explain that um, how everything came to be it just said that in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the answer is god you cannot understand it on your own okay on your own thinking on your own mind the bible says that G, uh, that god says my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts for us to even try to comprehend the level that god is at we cannot okay but and I say this, when we, when we know that the answer is God, even Mary was not able to wrap her head around the situation. But what Mary did was even more powerful because what she did was submit herself to the will of God. Okay? It said in verse 38, Mary, Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And this let it be to me according to your word is such a powerful phrase. It shows the level of faith that Mary was able to have. And I want this kind of faith, not only just for me, but for everyone who are believers, for everyone who are disciples, who are even watching this online. Okay. Now, this is the difference between Zacharias and Mary. To submit to the will of God when you know what is happening is easy. Yeah, it's easy to know when you have a whole step by step plan of everything that is happening or even it's easy to to submit to the will of God when you're the one in control at that moment. Like, you know that, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This is going to happen. I'm going to do this a certain way and this and that a certain way. OK. But the supernatural happens that even when you cannot wrap your head around it, you still choose to submit to God's will. Let it be to me according to your word. Okay, the point of the Holy Bible, yeah, the word of God, is not meant to be understood by us, but it is meant to, for us to, be, to believe in it. Okay, the word of God is for us, is the purpose of the word of God is so that it can be believed in. 
And by reading through it with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can see and hear God through His Word. So if you are still finding it hard to believe wholly on the Word of God, the Holy Bible, maybe because of Western materialistic view, worldviews or advancement of modern med medicine and science, then let me tell you this, okay? The way that God has created us humans comes with three components, okay? It is not the head, middle, torso, and the legs, okay? But the way, the three components that God has created us humans with is spirit, soul, and body, okay? So the body is how we experience our surroundings, the materials, the physical. Through the body, it connects us to our environment. Whereas the soul is the part of us that makes up the mind, emotion, and will. This is like the brain, heart, and volition, okay? You could also argue and say that it is the personality of that person. But the third component, which is the spirit, is the part of us that God gave for us to relate with him. So if the body relates to the world around us, the soul relates to oneself, and the spirit is the part of us that relates to the spiritual and the divine. Everyone has it too. The only difference between Christian and non-Christian is that with the non-Christians, their spirits are dead because they have no current connection with God. In the, in the Bible, death is a translation, mean, it means separation, okay? It is a separation from God. When, when we are going to experience death, it means that we are going to experience separation from God. And we do not want to experience that kind of death, all right, that the Bible explains. Yeah? The Bible says that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Meaning, if you want to experience the supernatural, if you want to experience God in your life, you have to be born again. If, in order for you to activate your connection with God, you have to be born again. And that way, your, the spirit part of ourselves can be alive. Okay, It is our personal connection to God. And without it, it is like a phone call without no single, signal, without no data, without no wire. Okay, it is hardwired into us as humans that we humans are capable of worship, whether we are born again Christians or not. Worship is actually a part of our lifestyle, but it is the difference between disciples, between believers, between non believers is what they choose to worship. Okay, so most people would worship themselves, their money, their materials, their own phones. You know, what you spend your time with. What I say worship is, time, worship is what you spend the most time with, yeah? How many of you have an iPhone and get regular updates on a weekly basis about how much time you spend on your phone, okay? So if you're looking at that and you see double digits on your phone, you know, I may not know what you are doing on your phones, okay? But it just goes to show that even up to this day, like people who say that idols were so old, like in the old society, only in the Bible, there's no idols now. I'm telling you, idols are everywhere. Anything that takes our focus and our priority away from God is an idol. Anything that takes our worship away from God is an idol. Okay? So, for us to understand how we can be more like Mary, to have that supernatural faith, is that we need to encounter God in the spirit and not in the mind. Many Christians today who leave the church, many Christians who leave Christianity, it is not because they, it is because they were only experiencing and encountering Christ in the mind and not in the spirit. Okay? You think that if there was hardcore evidence of a scientist disproving the Big Bang Theory or proving the origins of creation with the Creator, that, you know, everyone would believe as Christians. But, we cannot comprehend with our minds. You can even disprove every atheist in every argument, in every theory. And believe me, I've had my fair share of arguments even against other denominational Christians, okay? But this is not how we bring people back to God. You think that by disproving all of the atheist theories that we can, that we can bring them back to God? For me, I would rather lose an argument to win a friend then win an argument to lose a friend. Okay, let me say that again, because some, some of you guys are in a position where you are able to win, but because you don't want to lose an argument, you cannot win your friends. So let me say this again. I would rather lose an argument to win a friend 
than win an argument to lose a friend. Okay, God doesn't want us to win arguments against people. He wants us to save. He wants us to be used so that He can save their souls. Yeah, God doesn't want us to win arguments against people. He wants us to win people, and this is the impact of the supernatural. Yeah. So if you are a disciple who is struggling to make the transition from cell member to cell leader, upcoming life class in your destiny training, or it's been a while and you have not been able to open cell yet, this is the game changer. Yeah. The difference between that is the impact of the supernatural. So now. It is time to believe in the supernatural. Many Christians live their lives with a total disregard to the supernatural. Okay, a Christian living without the supernatural disrespects the very foundation of where Christian Christianity was built. If you are a Christian and you do not experience the supernatural, it is a disrespect to the foundation of Christianity. Okay, if. Jesus was not born of a virgin through Mary, Virgin Mary. If he did not live a sinless life, dying on the cross as a substitute for our sins, rose again three days later because there was no fault found in him. He ascended into heaven and is coming back soon. If none of these things ever happened, then Christianity would have never existed. So, for you to experience the supernatural, just as Mary had done, we must embrace the word from the Lord, not with. Our mind and with our head, but with our heart. Okay. Most of the time, these objections and obstacles are to protect the conscience from the assault of truth. Okay. So you know that what the Bible teaches, and human nature testifies. Okay. You know what is right and wrong. When you are living a life of sin, of selfishness and rebellion towards God and the principles of His universe. You know, yet what you are doing is you are trying to argue yourself intellectually out of that conviction. You know that you're not supposed to be at this place. You know you're not supposed to be doing certain things, but then you always create excuses for yourself, saying, "You know, this is just a one-time thing," or you know, like I'm not going to do it again.、Uh, it's only a little. You know, you try and convince yourself that what you are doing is okay, but you know deep down. That it is wrong, and you know the difference between right and wrong. Okay, so why does this happen? This is actually God's one of God's way of engaging with us, of how He speaks to us. The conscience is one of the ways our human spirit engages with the supernatural. So even up to now, you all have a clear sense of what is right or wrong. You understand that you know stealing is wrong. You understand that killing is wrong. You understand that. Uh, going against the law is wrong, okay. But we do things in our minds to intellectually warp and try and make ourselves comfortable with the fact that we can do these things. Yeah, the assurance does not come via the intellect. So let's stop communicating to people's intellect alone, okay. So with God, nothing is impossible, okay. But if you only see it with your head, you're never going to see it, okay. If you are watching a 3D movie and you do not have 3D glasses, do you think you will enjoy the movie? Yeah, you will never be able to see the third dimension of the movie scenes popping out at you. But through submission to the will of God, through the supernatural, and through believing with your heart and not in your mind, that is how you can see the supernatural dimensions take place in your life. Those are your spiritual 3D glasses. Yeah, this assurance does not come via the intellect. So let's stop. Communicating to people's intellect alone. In our text, at the last couple of verses, verse thirty-seven, it says that with with God, nothing will be impossible. It's translated in the International Standard Version and the American Standard Version. Nothing is impossible with with respect to any of God's promises, or for no word from God shall be void of power. So, for us as disciples and leaders. In order to win people, we have to win with the supernatural. So, as I close today, I want to read to you in Jeremiah ch chapter twenty-nine. It says, "Call upon me," God says, "and go pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found of you," says the Lord. So tonight, or as you are watching and you have realized the lack of supernatural in your life. 
the lack of God's promises or even the ability to perceive God in your life. If you are living your life just day by day, going through the motions, then I want you to pray with me. To come with not just the intellect side, yeah, but to come with a heartfelt confirmation and decision to seek God. To, send, to then say to God and just say, Lord, let it be to me according to your word. That you will believe in the supernatural power of God and to have faith in what he has done in your life, what he is doing in your life and what he is about to do in your life. If you are ready, pray with me and let's just bow our heads and close. Lord, we just want to glorify your name and we thank you for your word today. We thank you for, believe, for us believing that we know that there is nothing impossible with you. That your word will not come with, with void of power, but Lord, let your word speak life into us right now. So Lord, I pray even for all the people listening and tuning in right now. Lord, if they have not, if we feel like we have not experienced the supernatural with you, Lord, if we are lacking in our connection with you, Lord, I pray that you will ignite us with your Holy Spirit, oh Lord. Allow us to be ready. Let us drop our mindset. Uh, let us have an open heart and an open mind to believe in your word. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to be with us, O oh Lord. Let your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and, and shadow us and be with us, O oh Lord. That we will be like Mary and we will say, Lord, let it be to me according to your word. That if I am a disciple, if I am a cell member, Lord, I believe in the supernatural ability to make me into a cell leader. If I have an open cell, I believe in the supernatural ability to close my 12. If I have a closed 12, I believe in the supernatural ability to build my 144. That you have declared this in your word for us. Lord, if I am someone who has not activated my spirit, my connection with you, if I feel like I am... Uh, my spirit is dead if i have not been born again or believe in god lord i ask right now for you to come into my heart to be my lord and savior that you will be the one to lead me to guide me and i come with a heart that is submitted to your will i come with the mindset ready to experience you through your word that i will be ready to be led by your holy spirit so lord i thank you for today we give you all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And everyone says, Amen and Amen. So if you have prayed that prayer with me, I just want to thank you all for listening and tuning in. If you are, if you have been invited and this is your first time, I would like you to then uh, go and message or be straight into contact with the person that invited you. If you are a cell member who has not been in touch with their cell leader lately, I would like you to go and reach out to them. And even for those who are uh, leaders or, or leaders or potential leaders, I want you guys to go and, and make a move right now. Believe in the supernatural and let God use you just as he used Mary, just as he used all those people in the Bible. And let's declare with our heart, let it be to me according to your word. Thank you. God bless and have a wonderful night.